Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. We've got an exciting show today. And if you're wondering why I'm standing in front of the gates of the Mount Auburn Cemetery, well, don't go away. When we come back, we'll tell you why. We're here with the mayor of Baltimore City, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, at the Mount Auburn Cemetery ribbon cutting. Mayor, this is a, a great moment here in the city. What do you um, have to say about this? I'm just proud of this day. Uh, for so long, this uh, cemetery, this place of history right. and pride for our community has been neglected. Right. And so many uh, organizations and people came together to make it different, to make it a place that we can be proud of. And I'm just hoping. Uh, that this this celebration marks right. a new beginning. Okay. In your comments, you talked about all the folks coming together to make this happen. Doesn't this also uh, work with all other areas of the city as far as other projects in the city also? Definitely. We, nobody can do it alone. We right. have to work in partnership. And when we work in partnership with a common goal, there's right. nothing that we can't do. Especially with all the, uh, the churches and the community groups and all. This is kind of... Um, a road map to what we can do in the city, right? It is. We block may, by block, great, neighborhood by neighborhood. Great, great. great. Well, thank you, Mayor, for oh, coming Oh, my on. pleasure. Right. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. As we've been here all morning long at the Mount Auburn Cemetery with the restoration ribbon cutting ceremony here, uh, with me now are inmates from the Maryland Department of Corrections. And who are we happy? Ernest Robertson. Uh, Michael Toter. Okay, and as, I, as we've been talking earlier, none of this could have been done without the work of the uh, gentleman from the uh, Maryland Department of Corrections. Um, guys, tell me what kind of work you've been doing out here. Um, mainly mowing and weed eating and chopping trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I, when I first came out, we had, we had sections that, that you couldn't see any headstones. Right, right. We, we cut them with machetes right. and um, little saws and right. uh, the bush... Did hole. you know anything about this cemetery before you did this project? I didn't, no. Okay, have you ever done anything like this before? Uh, never. Okay, no. what do you think? I, I had never known the history of it. So what do you think when they called you and told you you're going to be on a, on a crew to go out and restore an old African-American cemetery? Oh, I, was, I felt, you know, I was very happy that, uh, that we could have an opportunity to right. give back to the community right. to, uh, to, to successfully you know pay back our debt okay. to society and, and as you were uh, came out here and you saw the work that had to be done and uh, the tombstones and you saw the age on some of these tombstones what'd you think about that very old very it's, old uh, I just learned the history last night from uh -huh. my mother okay. telling me it was an old black cemetery uh -huh. right. I never knew that okay and so how do you feel about uh, you know the fact that you know a major pro project is coming to like this from what it was and that you were a part of it. It just makes you feel good, you know, that you can that you can give back instead of sitting in mm -hmm. a building. Uh, you can come out here and actually do some work and um, make yourself feel good, be part of something. Okay. And, and what does it mean that when you when you are released and you're out in the community and you're giving back into the uh, the community at, uh, as a citizen? What does it mean about that? Does it prepare you? Have you felt like this is preparing you for going back in the community? Yeah, I think definitely. It it has a lot of a lot of impact on you. You know, being a part of something like right. this that you right. can, that you can work hard. You you know that you're giving back instead of just sitting sitting in a room. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's very nice. So what do you have to say about the rest of the crew out here? You guys work hard out here. Yeah, everybody works real hard. Mm -hmm. uh, inmates are the uh, <laughs> real real heroes out uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. You know, to do this, it's it's hard. Well, that, that's 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 definitely true. I mean, I've seen the cemetery over the years, and I saw what it was. So the words heroes. Are definitely what uh, should be attached to you guys because this place was a mess and even though a lot of people were coming out here trying to uh, do their part in cutting grass and and doing what they could do it took a team like you guys to come out here and I'm telling you it's hard labor I know you know it. it's work it's good work to come out you put in a good day's work coming out here working but uh, and I think a lot of people have learned that uh, that you guys have are the heroes in this situation so what do you think about people calling you heroes? It feels better than uh, inmate. Yeah, you know? that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. It, 
It's very nice. Well, then we are going to replace the word inmate mm -hmm. with the word hero and, 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 and the rest of the guys. And we want to give, you know, uh, accolades to all the other team that's been a part of working with you. Uh, and you guys just, you know, you really can't, I don't think you really know how important what you have done. You saw the amount of people that came out here for this ribbon cutting ceremony. I think you don't realize just how important what you have done means to the people who have relatives in this cemetery. I have a grandfather buried here in the cemetery. I came out here the other day and was trying to find him. And the guys that were out here tried to even help me find my grandfather. And you all have taken pride in what you're doing. So I want to thank you on behalf of the citizens and the people whose families are buried here in the cemetery. I want to thank you on behalf of them for what you've done and just uh, look forward to uh, erasing that word inmate and putting that word hero in there, okay? Because yes, right. you're definitely my heroes today. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Thank All right, you. don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. We're here in uh, Mount Auburn Cemetery with President of City Council, President Jack Young. Um, President Jack Young, you've got family here in the cemetery. Yes, I have my grandmother that's buried here. Um, you know, could never find a grave. I'm quite sure now right. we probably can find it somewhere. Right. So what, what do you think about the fact that this has uh, been a major project to get this done? I think it's wonderful, man. Um, long time coming, but mm -hmm. I thank Secretary Maynard and um, the Able Foundation and all the volunteers and partners who came together to make this happen. Look how mm -hmm. it looks really well. It looks good. Yeah, well, you saw it before, right? I, I was out here um, helping to clean up with okay. Melvin Stooks. Um, I think it was in 97 right. um, when we had weed whackers and garden snakes right. and everything else was out here chasing right. us away. Right. And it was really a job that I saw as being, you know, unachievable. Right. But, you know, the inmates came out here. We hold gratitude exactly. to the inmates who yeah, came and, out here and yeah. took care of this. It's a major center. task to do something yeah. like this. And Absolutely. weed whackers and, and lawnmowers can clear some spaces, Absolutely. but you had weeds out here oh, yeah. that were bigger than trees. Yeah, they were bigger than us, right, you know? right. but I uh, look at it now and say, wow, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, looking place this is now. Right. Well, you know? Mr. President, don't you think also if we can do this in a cemetery, that we can all do, also do this in our neighborhoods? Absolutely. I greatly believe that, okay. that we can do the same type of uh, thing, you can bring our communities back right. to life. You right. know? So cemetery, right. you know, where our loved ones are buried, and um, sometimes our communities look like Right. Yeah. You know, so okay. I believe that we should put some focus on our All neighborhoods right. as well. So moving forward, huh? Right. Ashes right. to ashes, dust to dust. There you go. Thank right. you, sir. Well, I'm going to go back Thank to you. why we're here today. Sure. Okay. Uh, tell me about what you've seen over here. I saw you walking around in the cemetery yeah. and what you saw over there. Sure. I th what I saw, I was just looking at all the uh, tombstones of of men and women who right. built our city, exactly. who, who wrote the history, not right. only of our city and our state, but really wrote the history of our country. Right. I mean, the notion that this cemetery has been here since 1810 exactly. means that there are black men and women who fought in the defense right. of Baltimore right. in the bombardment and the British attack of 1814. There are very likely the, the buried here uh, men and women whose hands stitched together exactly. the fabric of the Star Spangled Banner exactly. and then the civil rights legends. So right. I also thought back to the many spring and fall cleanups that we had here right. when I was mayor and right. we could never quite uh, recover. Exactly. We would come back every six months and see that right much of the there. area yeah. that we had recovered right. had already been taken over right. by the weeds growing up again. So right. this really makes me feel good in my heart to walk these hills and, right. and to see what a tremendous job sure. that uh, the correctional officers and the, the inmates and also Sharp Street volunteers right. and the Able Foundation and right. so many people have done. This is an important part of, of Baltimore's story and of America's story right. and we need to treat it, uh, this hallowed place, with the respect and dignity that, that it is due. Right. And, and I also mentioned to the mayor and to President Young that this is also a road map for what citizens can do all around the city and the state when it comes to really putting the hands together and getting dirty and getting things done also, right? Yeah, it really is. It's a story of, it's really the story of Baltimore, right. isn't it? I mean, right. when we had no federal government to back us exactly. up in 1814, exactly. uh, we were the people that came together, right. black and white, slave and free, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and we carried the day. There probably is no finer expression of patriotism than right. when you express it in a very local way uh, with the respect that we um, summon forth uh, for our neighbors when right. we believe in one another right. and when right. we also keep faith with our ancestors. I think you, 
you can't really hope to inspire right. the next generation right. if you don't keep faith with your ancestors. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, I know that they're. I know that it's only uh, their bodies that are here, but in a very real way, uh, I think at least in our memories as we walk these hills and look at these tombstones, okay. their spirit comes alive as well. All right, Governor, thank you, and thank you for thank all you. your folks that do a great job with hey, this. Thank glad you. Glad to be care. a small right. part of it. Take care. Thanks. Good seeing you. AB all right. Yep. I'm here now with Dr. David Wilson, president of the Morgan State University. Dr. Wilson, uh, thanks for coming on. And also, tell us what role Morgan State University has played in this. Well, you know, today is a very exciting day for uh, us at uh, Morgan State University, mm -hmm. you know, because we actually owe uh, our founding, you know, to what we are celebrating here today, okay. which is the cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, uh, in uh, 1867, uh, Morgan State University was actually found um, as uh, the Sharp uh, uh, Street uh, Church. Uh, and then, you know, of course, the cemetery okay. uh, was uh, established a right. couple of years later. Right. Uh, and so uh, we have buried here in the cemetery uh, many individuals who went to Morgan, mm -hmm. uh, many individuals who were responsible for um, the founding of Morgan. Right. Uh, and we have many, many Morgan memories here. Uh, and so the whole notion of uh, having our faculty mm -hmm. and our students to uh, participate in uh, this uh, uh, restoration of this cemetery right. uh, today uh, was just remarkable for us at Morgan. And yeah. so I really applaud the work of our alumni right. and our students and our wonderful professors in making sure. this happen. Sure. Now, and what role did the students play in helping to get this cemetery fixed up? Well, as the students in our School of Business have put together a uh, business plan mm -hmm. uh, to uh, hopefully keep up what has right. already been achieved right. here. Uh, then the students in architecture and planning uh, I came saw the, forward. I saw and, the designs. They were wonderful. Oh, these are wonderful, yes. wonderful students. Yes. And uh, our architecture and planning program right. uh, is one of the best programs in the country. Right. And we have students who are passionate, who are committed to mm -hmm. historic preservation. Right. And so when you put the skill level that our students possess uh, together with their passion, with mm -hmm. their commitment, with their dedication, and then you have the same thing at the professorial level. You right. have a, an award-winning combination. Right. And so we are very, very pleased with... Uh, that partnership. Uh, now, in addition, our history students, sure. you know, were involved because okay. I mean, this goes back, you know, right. 1869, right. Right. Uh, and so uh, in order to be able to track uh, current day relatives of individuals sure. who are you know, sure. six feet below here, sure. you know, that requires a huge historical um, uh, effort, uh, and so our history students are involved in that. And so we're just excited at Morgan. Yeah, well, I think we're all excited. I, my, yeah. my grandfather's buried here, and I saw it. Um, over the years and saw what had gone array in the cemetery and how look at it today I mean it's amazing so I want to thank you all for uh, for all the work that you all have done for Morgan State University and the students and your faculty for uh, the role you've played in making this thing happen today oh, thank you very much thank you dr. Wilson mm -hmm. Welcome back. I'm here now with Sergeant Henna of the Maryland Department of Corrections. Uh, Sergeant, you oversee the, the inmates that work out here on this project. Is that true? Sure. So tell me what you do on a daily basis with these gentlemen. Well, I just make sure that um, they're safe and um, keep an eye on them and, and just, um, you know, just supervise what they okay. do. And how long have you been working on the project? Uh, four years. Four years. So yes, you sir. were here and you saw when this looked like that high brush over on the far side there. Yes, sir. So what, have you, what do you think about the fact that the, the, the gentlemen have done such a great job out here under your supervision? Well, I, I just, you know, want to thank uh, the department right. for, you know, allowing these uh, gentlemen right. to come out here and um, do such a great job. Right. And doesn't it say something for the, the department who puts a trust in you to have a trust in these gentlemen to, uh, to work on a project that's so important to the community, I mean, because something like this could have actually backfired, uh, but it says something that that the trust level was so great, and the project came off without a hitch. Well, sure. Uh, actually, the department kind of, you know, came out here and not just telling me what to do or what right. they, what they expect, but right. um, show me how they want it done. Right. And I had like um, back then a warden Philbrook. Right. He comes out here like um, five hours a day. Right. And with a machete and um, sickles. And he'd be out there with a chainsaw, you know, right. working. So with right. that, I saw the intensity of the, okay. this um, this project. Okay. And so, Sergeant, we have a new word. We're replacing the word inmate with heroes. And, and I'm sure you're proud of these guys and the work they've done out here. Is that not true? 
Well, it is true. I'm proud of them, proud of the department as well. All right. Well, Sergeant, we thank you for the work you've done out here and thank you for your team. Thanks a lot, sir. And, and just uh, like you said, thank you for the heroes. You were welcome. All right. Thanks a lot. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. Standing in front of the tombstone of Joe Gans, the old master, um, who was a heavy, a lightweight boxer from Baltimore City, and I'm here with Kevin Grace. Uh, so tell me what you do to uh, keep Joe Gans' memory alive. Well, two years ago, um, 2010 was 100 years ago that he passed away. Right. And a lot of I was surprised how many folks did not know anything about Joe. Uh, Joe was the first Black American boxing champion, actually first Black American champion in any sport. Mm -hmm. May the 12th, two days ago. Uh, was 110 years ago that he wound up winning uh, his lightweight title in right. Fort Erie, uh, Ontario, against right. uh, Frank Aaron with the first first round knockout, and he also had a 42 round fight. 42 rounds. 42 rounds in Goldfield, Nevada, which is about 183 miles northwest of Las Vegas. Right. A gold mining town at the time, and uh, they put that fight on. And unfortunately, he only it was a $30,000 purse, biggest purse ever. Mm -hmm. Dudes at Jim Crow segregation, him as a champion, they only gave him 10000 okay. and he dictated the uh, terms of the fight to him, about three weigh-ins, and okay. he had to lose a lot of weight. Now, Joe Gans is from Baltimore. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, he also had a hotel that he gave UB Where Blake. Where was that? Okay. Uh, East Lexington uh -huh. Street and Colvin on the, on the corner. It's right where the uh, post office annex okay. building is. And he gave it to UB Blake? No, he didn't give it oh, to okay. him. He hired okay. UB as uh, a 19 year old, gave okay. him his first job as a okay. piano player. All right. okay. And then UB wrote four different ragtime songs there, the Goldfield Rag and a couple other songs. And that's where he got to do his uh, uh, practice craft. There. Okay, now, now I see where there's been um, some restoration of the plaque of the headstone. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much history is in this cemetery yes. and even the fact that this uh, world lightweight champion um, came from Baltimore. You mean people know about the uh, the big boxes and, 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 and Jack Johnson, those boxes, but they don't really know about this guy. Yeah, he had over a hundred wins and uh, eight knockouts. Mm -hmm. I mean, excuse me, eight, eight losses on right. that. And uh, it's just so sad. Unfortunately, he was supposed to be in Jack Johnson's corner on July 4th, right. 1910 in Reno, but he was fighting tuberculosis. Okay. Probably a, a cause from that fight in, in Goldfield, trying to lose that, that okay. weight. He was fighting 135, 132 right. pounds. And um, he died several weeks later. And okay. of course, Jack Johnson being boisterous, a heavyweight, right. and Joe quiet. Yeah. And also he had the fir first black in Baltimore to have a car as well. Wow. So uh, okay. so much history. And I want All folks right. to know, know his name and... Okay. and and, well, uh, well, well keep, keep up the great work you're doing to keep his memory alive, and, and thanks for coming on here today. All right, thank you. All right, take care now. Right. Okay, I'm now with uh, Secretary Gary Maynard. Uh, Secretary, we've been talking over the last couple of weeks about the work that your agency has done with the inmates, and uh, wow, what do you think about the ribbon-cutting ceremony today? Yeah. I think it's a great day. We, uh, a lot of people have put in a lot of work over the past many, many years. Right. We came along four years ago right. and gave it a little boost right. with some inmate uh, manpower. And the, it's obvious today you can see all the different groups that came together for right. this and really how, how meaningful it is to people that were here today. Sure. And as Secretary, it rained throughout the whole ceremony, but yet people were still coming. Uh, the partnership was here. The excitement uh, was here. And even after the uh, the ceremony and ribbon cutting, um, people started walking out right. into the cemetery despite the, the mud and, and the rain. And uh, that shows you the excitement of what's right. really happened here. Do you think that this is something that could show uh, the city, uh, the community and people in the city just how a partnership can work with the, the inmates giving back to the community? Right. I think it's a great example, uh, as, as I try to describe in the ceremony, Inmates want to give something back. Right. They want to pay back for their crimes, but they can't do it on their own. It right. takes me and our department to set up situations like this where mm. they can give something right. back. So it is obviously the, the partnership that took place here and the acceptance, because we used inmates that are from this Cherry Hill, right. uh, Westport area. Right. And the fact that they give something back, the church accepted them back in the community and helped them exactly. return to the community, that is so meaningful. and. Uh, that there are many many projects like this we could do mm -hmm. it's just a matter of finding that project and then it takes a lot of time to get the get the coalition right. together to get the right. groups together and i heard a story earlier about the fact that uh, 
people from the church were even bringing food out <laughs> right. to, right. to feed to feed the inmates, and, <laughs> right. and, and even that, though you were feeding them, they wanted to give them something that's even more. A, that's not uncommon, you know. I mean, people people have they, they think of inmates as numbers and people that you see on TV. Right. Then when you see them out working, you see there's human beings exactly. there, you know, and they're exactly. trying to do something right. Exactly. And then then people start to feel compassion for them, want to help them. So that's right. that's the that's the beauty of, of public works is that it puts the inmates out there mm -hmm. working and then the community will accept them then. That's about the only way you can change public opinion about right. offenders is to have them work. Right. So public public safety works a good way and, to do and, that. And doesn't it show a, a trust also that the inmates out here working um, and, and you've had not had anybody try to run away from the site or any, no. any problems with the inmates no, in the community. Uh, so isn't that show you a, a level of trust also? Ab absolutely. And part of that is the inmates knowing they're in their own community, that they're right. giving something back, and there's a community there that's reaching out to them, right. expecting them right. to do well. Right. Well, Secretary, I want to thank you for the work that you've done with your, your staff and the inmates and the partnership with the community. And uh, we're all work together to make sure this continues and the cemetery never gets back like it was before. We'll, we'll stay with it. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Don't go away. We'll be right back on The Pulse. I want to thank all my guests for coming on the show today and making this show a very special show. And as always in parting, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your finger on the pulse of our community.